Well, what are we up to today? Well, it's a hot day. That means the air conditioning is running in my workshop. So you're going to have to put up with that. But, we had some stuff arrive. Now, you probably noticed from the title that this episode's about an Argo, which probably means I'm modifying it. Well, a couple of times I've entered the water and I've forgotten to put my bilge plugs in. Now, luckily I'm the meticulous sort of person that checks that quite meticulously and I'm a little bit paranoid about it, but um, I was in some reasonably deep water, it was about 30 seconds or a minute or so before I caught it, and uh, I had to re-oil all my chains. I don't like having to do that, especially when the water's brackish. So, I've got myself this J-Car issue float switch. Now, I did have plans on using a water center board, which I have around here somewhere. Um, but I decided this was a better way. I was going to do a little baby Arduino, like a DigiSpark module, which I have over here, one of these guys, little tiny microcontroller. And I was going to use a uh, circuit board with some tracks on it that would sit in the water. And that would give me the ability to determine the level and salinity and all that sort of stuff. But I decided that um, that might not be the most reliable method. This, on the other hand, is pretty reliable and it can be mounted in a couple of different orientations for normally open and normally closed mode. So that will be nice. Um, I'll have to make a bracket, but we'll get to that. And there's should be a lock nut in here as well. That should screw that on. Now I have some DC plugs there unrelated. I have a little five to 12 volt buzzer here. That should be enough to alert me that I've got water in the bilge. Now, because lots of crud gets down there in oil and grease, there is a potential that this could stick shut. Um, in which case, it's going to annoy the living crap out of me. So, I've got some little switches I can put in line and hide under the seat. Oh, I had to stop and yawn there. I'm tired. But, what that means is then I can shut this thing up if it's annoying the living hell out of me. So, first thing I'm going to do before anything here is I'm going to put these bits on so I don't lose them. Now my bilge pump is on the right hand side um, and the reason for that is my control sticks are also on the right hand side which means there's a slight bit of a dip when I'm sitting in there on that side usually. Um, I'll usually obviously do the right thing and I shift my balance when I'm in the water but if anywhere is going to pull water, that's likely the spot where it's going to pull when I immediately enter the water. And the way flooding ships and boats work is the water tends to run to the lowest point, which of course makes that point heavier and of course floods in with more water and so on and so on. So my bilge pump is at the lowest point that's likely to happen. Um, I don't have two of them, but I think I should be able to refloat it with a 2,000 gallon per hour pump. But I'm going to stick this little guy somehow near the bilge pump up the front there. So that if we start getting water in there, I can tell before it starts coming through the floorboards. Um, I think I've done my homework, and I think I'm going to have about 150, nearly 200 litres before I see it coming through the floorboards. Considering the capacity on fresh water of that is about 380 kilograms, I'm 140 kilograms at the moment, would you believe? I do need to lose a couple of kilos, um, but that means that by the time I've got 200 kilos full of water in and 140 kilos of me in there, um, I'm pretty close to sinking by the time I see it coming through the floorboards. There's not a lot of time for me to take any kind of action, whereas this will tell me as soon as I've got a couple of inches of water enough to start the bilge pump. Now this might bounce around when I'm driving and all sorts of stuff but I'm just gonna have to deal with it and I guess that's what the shut up switch is for when I'm on land I'm just gonna have to forget I'm just gonna have to remember to leave it on so I'll make myself a little placard for the dash to remind me but um, if you think and by all means leave this in the comments if you think I should probably leave this permanently connected and annoying without an isolation switch so that I can't make that screw up by all means, tell me in the comments. I'd be happy to hear your justification. So anyway, let's get this temporarily hooked up with clip leads and uh, just have a play with the circuit. So we have 
5 volts over here. I've got 5, 9 and 12 volts available on the house battery regulator. I'm going to start with 5 because these buzzers can be bloody annoying. Which is also why we're using them. I've actually got one of these on my infrared perimeter beam on the front driveway and all the neighbours can hear it. So yeah, and it's only, it's been toned down to 5 volts as well. Alright, now, um, these wires are a little dark and I'm having some trouble with multiple sclerosis lately so I can't quite make out the colours real well. So that's a black guy. So, um, how are we going to do this? We're going to switch the positive. So, I'll go over how this works. So, we have positive power input here. It goes through the switch. It comes out of the switch into the buzzer. And then we just go all the way back around and we run ground to the other side of the buzzer. So I'll recap, negative, through buzzer, through clip lead, through switch, back to positive. Now we can determine if the switch will actually do what we want it to. This should be a nice, easy, reliable circuit. So, that should work very well. So that's, oh, we lost a clip off something. We lost the positive clip off. Hey, okay, so that's the wiring done. Now, I deviated from plans a little bit. I have a couple of clips on the end here and no switch. So I figure I can clip this on temporarily till I find out how annoying it is. Uh, and if it really pisses me off, I can stand up, fold up the seat and rip the damn thing off. Okay, so it's been about a week since I wired this up and we're in the workshop here. I scrammed through a big bit of left or a big box full of leftover bits and pieces um, that I got uh, when I was helping the uh, owners of a uh, hardware store that closed down. Um, they were kind enough to give me a few freebies. So I'll be going through that and I found some of these shelf brackets that I think will probably fit the radius of this very nicely. And I might end up gluing this into the bracket or at least I'll glue the nut in. Then I can control which direction this thing okay, points. Okay, so we're back inside and I'm looking at ways to mount this. And uh, I've made some preparations. I think I'm probably going to do away with this nut and washer. I'm going to leave them on here for the moment. But I'm thinking I'm going to sit this in the crook here and use some um, two-part epoxy. I bought this to uh, fix my camera helmet. It's done a wonderful job. And they have these mixing nozzles, which they only come with two of. I don't really want to use my mixing nozzle, but... I'm thinking it's, I'll probably regret not using that if things fail and I end up actually sinking this thing. So let's get set up for that. So it's been about 10 minutes. And we're going to peel this off the plastic if we can, but probably not. By definition, it's a glue, so um, we'll see how much we can detach from here. Actually, some of that excess might come off with the plastic. I think it's living up to its name as being a strong glue. Yeah. <clears throat> so, we've got this nicely cleaned up and trimmed away. Um, now, I had a look around my magnet collection and decided that probably I had a better option than magnets. And this is this mounting tape, which is supposed to be good for about 45 kilograms to the square centimetre. I'm going to get probably three or four square centimetres on there. I think that will be enough to hold that in quite fine. Well, I do like to um, screw things down. In this case, it's going to make a hell of a racket if for some reason it falls into the bottom of the bilge. I'm going to know about it. Um, I also think that I might get... Oh, no, I'll just leave that nut floating around. It's not really going back on there. It's not going to hurt anybody floating around on the cable anyway. Um, so, let's put a bit of this stuff on the back. So we're back out at the Argo, and I'm trying a slightly funny angle to try and get you out of the airflow of that thing um, because I obviously haven't played this back. Let's peel off our... Oh, let's Before we do that, let's um, untape this lead. Okay. Now we can peel off the sticky protector. Or the protector for the sticky. Bye-bye. And now in we go. Would you believe it doesn't 
Would you believe it doesn't fit the way that I thought it would? Alright, so there's too much oil and crap down there for the sticky stuff to work. So I guess it's back to the magnet idea. Alright, so I had it mounted in a really beautiful spot and I thought that it might actually work and I tested it and it was it was buzzing constantly and I couldn't work out why. That's why I'm holding a magnet sensor down with a magnet and now there's enough magnetism through it, conducted through that bar to set it off. Oh, actually, if I swap the polarity around, that sets it off. Maybe I just need to sit it on that position. That's crazy. And it'll still function. All right, problem fixed on camera. All right, so we're back a couple of days later here. Um, it got way too hot. It got to nearly uh, 40 degrees today. Celsius, that is. Something about 105 Fahrenheit, I think roughly off the top of my head. Somebody will have to check that out. Anyway, um, so I pretty much had to abandon this. It just got too hot for me with my multiple sclerosis. My legs started working funny. So, um, yeah. Now, we're on the GoPro at the moment um, because things... Uh, <laughs> Things have changed in the demands of this project, so we'll, we'll just we'll leave it at that. Um, anyway, where were we? We found a good spot to mount this, and it functions. We are going to have to put some water in here and test that, but I have a plan for that at some point too. Probably not this afternoon, but you'll see that fairly soon on this video. Today, we're going to work on zip tying things in, um, and I might see if I can get a zip tie around it so that the magnet isn't the only thing holding that position sensor, or the, the sensor in anyway. Um, so yeah, we do need to, uh, have a bit of a look at things. Now, I need to check on my camera here. Um, so yeah, I'll find some zip ties and we'll see how we go. Oh, somebody's been nice enough to leave a brand new pack of zip ties and some cutters here. I guess I don't need to go inside and get them. Alright, now that I've got the camera out of the wind a little bit, uh, because it was kind of windy there, um, I'm not sure actually in the editing whether I'm going to run that through a time lapse or something, but anyway, we're out of the wind now. I've stuck my junction under this zip tie here because that's the most likely place where the cable's going to fail, and if it does, it's pretty easy for me to get to. Um, it's also easy to chop if I get sick of that stupid buzzer at some point. Anyway, now, right about now, most of you would be expecting me to wire this up to this um, fuse and the terminal block up here. I'm not going to. I'm going straight back to the battery. And the main thing is I may be on the water when I want to disconnect this. Uh, so under the seat is a lot easier to get to when I'm in the water than having to take the bonnet off and throw it in the back and muck around with all that sort of stuff. So, I'm going to run this through the same way I ran my other auxiliary, wire, auxiliary wiring, which is in underneath the cowl here and underneath the little fold of plastic and in under the seat near the handbrake. So uh, we'll go from there. Let's pick this up, have a look at our clips, which I had tucked into the battery under here. All right. By the way, this is something I'm going to keep under here. This is, we'll take a slight detour for this. This is a uh, personal PFD um, and it straps onto your wrist. So yeah, this straps onto your wrist and you've got a little lever here you can pull and it takes these little CO2 cartridges. Um, I was planning on using four of these as an emergency flotation device for the Argo, but I've since come up with a better idea. I gave two of them away to a mate. So yeah, that, um, but I keep one under the seat anyway in case I have an extra or I end up in the water and have forgotten my life jacket or something. Um, anyway. We need to get these wires in. Right. So I've got the wire laid over the top of the wiring loom in there, so it shouldn't go too far. Um, now from here, I wonder if our camera angle can see this. Let me check. Probably can't. Let's angle down a bit. Okay. So from here, I'm simply going to tuck in underneath all of this. I'm just going to push down a little bit. I've already hidden the wire in here in the past. 
So this little thin wire shouldn't be too much trouble to hide in here. Not something I'd probably do in a professional environment, but certainly something I'm going to do in a personal environment. And guess what? I've got just enough cable for the battery wire. So let's lift up the um, seat again and I'll show you the angle from there. Now I'm really sorry for the wind noise but right near the air conditioning duct. Now I can imagine if you are watching this video it's possible that you might own an Argo. If you do you'll probably realize that <laughs> the wiring in my Argo is not factory and you would be right nor is the battery. The battery is a sealed lead acid deep cycle that is about the same capacity as the one that was in here but half the physical size. It's a non-spillable type which means if I roll it over or bump I'm not going to have acid splashing around everywhere in here. Um, secondly it leaves room in here for my life jacket, a roll of toilet paper and a survival kit. Um, all things I think are very handy along with some bug spray. A little tin of this stuff, magic. All right, so we've just clipped on with our clips. At a later date, I'll put some proper, more solid wiring in here. Um, but for now, this is a quick disconnect in case something goes wrong with it. So, now we need to put our buzzer in situ. of extra wire for that. Um, not sure where we're gonna put it. I'm thinking actually probably up under the dash is probably a sensible thing to do. Now these things are a reed type buzzer so um, doing a coil of wire like this can form an inductor so you do have to be careful sometimes. This again is why I'm hooking this directly up to the battery instead of hanging off some end of the ignition circuit. But uh, I might come back and shorten this wire in the future. Now, I was going to just stick this down with some blue tack. Um, but uh, I don't know. <laughs> I need somewhere where I'm going to hear it, but not somewhere that it's going to get in the way of everything. You know what? I might. I do have a blob of blue tack here. I might whack that on the back here and I'll stick it just up under the dash for the time being and I'll see how that sounds. It does tend to resonate against any surface it's stuck to. So crucially is that away from the flywheel? Yes and I think we can stabilize that loom by tucking it under one of the other wiring looms. Now let's go around the front and test what this sounds like. that's quite uh, quite audible. Um, now I'm going to see if I can get a zip tie around that clamp. I'll do this one off camera because there might be swearing involved. All right well it's in not that you can tell but um, in any case uh, we do need to test this. This is going to happen tomorrow but I have a bit of a plan. I have my trailer hanging out around the corner here and it's tilted up. I'm thinking if I back this up till the nose is pointing down at roughly the same angle this is when it's in the water with one person, I reckon if I just dribble a little bit of water just in the front with a pipe on one side, I should be able to get away with testing this before the um, chains get wet. And sorry for the pause there, I was trying not to burp on camera. I do all this stuff unscripted and I don't do many outtakes. so. We'll put some water in it tomorrow, but uh, through the magic of video, you'll see it fairly soon. Okay, well we're parked at a bit of an angle here. I'm going to go and find my good uh, fancy long hose nozzle 
to stick down here and put a little bit of water in here hopefully forward of the front axles so I don't get my chains wet now I've never actually tested the bilge pump in this in anger I've never wanted to put water in here but in this case I'm gonna have to take one for the team and oil some chains up so let's go and get the water okay well we've got the bonnet off and we've got it up at an angle we've got our hose nozzle I'm gonna do a quick check to make sure it actually is still working all right still working we we'll take our big hose nozzle here I don't like doing this but we've got to test it all right I'm just gonna lean this up against the front here and let it dribble in for a little bit we'll find out when it goes buzz goes off now we need to shut it up all right now we'll test bilge pump not quite enough water to pump the bilge out <laughs> all right we'll have to do this a different way all right let's uh get it on flat and level ground and then we'll tip all the water out the back have a look under the floor pan here I'm not sure how well you can see on the GoPro I'm wearing polarized so I can't see the display uh, but it looks like a tiny little bit of water in there um, well below the chains which is good I will whack a little bit more oil on them after this anyway but that looks good so now we need to turn this thing around so I can tip it out Okay, nice little dribble of water coming out here. Not that much in there. We'll drive it up the ramp a little bit further and make sure we get every last little bit out. All right, so we've got a little bit here. Just gonna let it drip for a bit till all that's out. And it's gonna be relatively hot here for the next few days. So the rest of this should dry out pretty nicely. But I'm happy the bilge alarm works. That pretty well means this footage is done. Um, not really happy that the bilge pump can't pick up that much water, but also at that point it's below chain level by the time the bilge pump stops working. So. It was trying to suck some water up, so I think we'll be right. If I actually have a serious problem, I think the pump's going to work. So yeah, need to top up the fuel, I think, at some point. Probably put some fuel stabilizer in. Scrub some more of the mud off underneath here. But yeah, we'll be pretty good. So, that's pretty well it for another Argo adventure. 
And because you guys uh, keep coming to these videos for a bit of Argo footage of the thing actually driving, I'll stick on some footage from a, uh, a trip that I haven't aired yet, um, where I had to go and patrol some fence lines. So I'll whack a little bit of that footage on here for your viewing pleasure. And I'll see you all in the next one. Have fun. there they're little two jumps there's what else have we got might be a fox I don't quite ah there's little little tiny claws there that that's new what's well, not yeah no it's not cat it's not fox oh it could be echidna I know echidnas occasionally need to drink fresh water. I would be shocked to see an echidna out here though. Seems out of place. Let's have a look a bit further up. Yep, definitely the wallaby. What else have we got? Yeah, so I'm pretty sure that track's lost. It's pretty close to the GPS trail. I couldn't see any sign of it. So we don't really want to play any on this. Ah, that'll be what that other footprint was. Ah, let's go backwards a little bit. Footprint I couldn't work out. That will be wombat. I know wombats need to drink water fresh. That's a sizable wombat hole too. And they are creatures of habit. They will plow a track the same day, day in and day out. And if you put a fence in front of them, they'll pull those through that fence. So yeah, that answers that question. Look at a wombat. around 